Good afternoon, guys. Uh, we are just coming to another class, a continuation of last week, but we'll start with the roll call. And when you answer present, you lift your hand up so that I see. I uh, will call just the first names. Where it happens that the names are doubling, you indicate. Abenkele Tracy. You answer, I don't just lift the hand. Ateba. Amum, Awumu. Chisom. Njomkam. Steve. Absent. Etumbe Metuge. Foso Yufan. Ibrahim Rewan. Iyoro. Kamchum. Kemesungu. Manya. You don't even want me to call the name first. Mason Muzong. Moyo. Mpuam. Ngechuku. Ngo. Okay. Ngon. Lume. Njembe. Nesuma. Nusi. Fukwa. Nzati Odil. Where is Nzati? Peace Chinyenye. Penajo Ngufo. Pifine. Where is the Pifine? Oh, yeah. Sega Atangana. Sipo Nzali. Sisenyang, Sisenang, da. Songwa, Yemeli. Soup, Masoda. Takam. Tangui. Tata. Tatapong. Blessing. Chumchua, Wegang. Tegia, Rufet. Wate, Tegua. Will you for sing? Yam, Darin. Yang Yi Lea. Yemele, Fuju. Si, Nyanyo. Ngali, Evina. Ona, Fever, Oro. I've had everybody, right? Okay. Uh, thank you. The class of today, we are simply continuing with uh, our last week's lesson, which we started with. Uh, we started with the chemistry of elements, and we said that elements are all pure substances, right? Yes. By defining elements as being the basic pure substances. When they react through chemical reactions, that is when we have other substances or other pure substances which are compounds. And in total, we have 118 elements on the periodic table. And still these elements on the periodic table are grouped into blocks. We saw the different blocks of the periodic table where we have uh, the alkali, the alkali metals. We have the transition elements, and we have the known metals on this side, or the p-block elements. And where we are concentrating now is here, where we have the group one and the group two elements. And we started last week with the chemistry of the group one elements. We saw, what did we say are the members of the group one elements in order? Yes. Sodium, yes. Potassium. Cesium. And yes, that done man. And francium is finished now. Which one is left? Rubidium, yeah. After cesium is rubidium before francium. That's good. Okay, however, 
For ordinary level, you need to know the chemistry of lithium, sodium, and potassium particularly. Is that okay? And now we are doing the, we'll be doing the chemistry of sodium as representative for, we decided to do the chemistry of sodium as representative for the group one elements. And we started with uh, the chemistry of sodium itself, the extraction of sodium. We looked at sodium and uh, we agreed that from the general properties of these group one elements, they are very reactive. We, we saw their general properties, right? They are very reactive. They can be cut with a knife since they are soft. They are very uh, electropositive, all those properties. Now, looking at the chemistry of sodium, we started with uh, the extraction of sodium, okay? And we said sodium because they are very reactive. For group one elements, because they are very reactive, we extract them by electrolysis, right? And we saw how electrolysis takes place, where we saw the cathode reactions and the anode reactions. Now, it took us to that assignment where I asked you because before now we would have done electrolysis but we have to do this. So it, it took us to that assignment. People did the assignment? Yes, sir. How many people didn't do? Okay, exchange your books. Let's mark. So that we should get the right definitions. Exchange the books. For us to gain time, electrolysis is the breakdown of a compound using electric current or using electricity. People should mark now. Check, check what the, your friends have written. If it's too varied, you tell me electrolysis. This, whose book is this? It's her book. People exchange. Okay. Electrolysis is the breakdown of a compound using electricity. Is that what people have? Hey, somebody is trying to correct the book why it's already there. Oh. Yeah, what are you writing? Yeah, no, but you copy after now. You copy after, you see them. Electrolysis is the breakdown of a compound using electric current. Now, electrodes. You have drawn the diagrams, right? You drew the diagrams, it was part of the assignment. When you see those rods, either being a rod or whatsoever, which is entering into the cell, you see one is positive, one is negative. That is what is taking current into the cell. So they call them electrodes. So electrodes are simply uh, substances through which current enters or leaves the cell. Is that right? Those are electrodes. And we have two types of electrodes. Cathode and anode. So we say that the cathode is what? The negative electrode or the positive electrode? Positive. And the anode? Negative. Yeah. It's very simple for you to master that. Look at this. When we say, for example, for sodium, sodium is extracted from fused sodium chloride, right? Fused sodium chloride simply means that sodium chloride which is in liquid form. They simply heat it until it melts, it's in liquid form. And when it melts, it gives you sodium ions and it will give you chloride ions. This is what you have. In, this is what you will have down. And now we have said that we have two types of terminals, right? We have the cathode, we have the cathode and we have the anode. From these ions, we know that this one is what? How do we call this one? Cat ion, right? This is a cat ion. This is the anion. So now it is simple for you, even when you are getting confused, okay? When you want to get confused, you simply come here. You know that like charges attract, while unlike charges repel each other, right? You see, anion, anion goes directly to anode. That is what is there. Cat ion goes to cathode. Their names are similar. So it means that the anode must be positively charged and the cathode is negatively charged. Is that right? So it's not something that you should be confused about. You don't have to always get confused about. So we agree that the cathode is negatively charged, right? Why the, uh, the anode is positively charged? And we found out that 
for the anode reaction, you have sodium ions which comes to receive the electrons. Because since it's negatively charged, it means it is rich in electrons, right? It comes to receive electrons to become sodium metal. Why? In the anode, this, uh, the chloride ions comes here to give an electron. Is that right? So that is basically what we had last week. So uh, the cathode is the tro trolytic cell should drop the down cell. Is that okay? Because we are talking about the industrial production of sodium. So you people should, if you have marked, you should exchange back the books. There are simple definitions that you know. Make sure you mark it, eh? since people do not want to mark bad. If it is wrong, you, you put bad there now. If it is wrong, you put wrong there. Some people, when it is wrong, they put a small question mark. Yes. Elec electrolysis. This is the process of using electricity to bring about chemical changes. It's correct. It's correct. The process to use electricity to bring about chemical change in a substance is correct. Yes. Electrolyte. It is a substance that conducts electricity in solution or molten state. Correct. It is the chemical breakdown or decomposition of a compound due to passage of an electric current. It's correct. When I read like that, what you already have, you mark it. It is a process by which current is passed through a substance to effect a chemical change. Correct. If you have same definition, you just mark. Electrode, it is a conductor that is used to make contact with a non-metallic part of a circuit. Uh, non-metallic part of a circuit. No, no. There you are talking about electricity and when you are using, uh, when you are using uh, the name uh, of a circuit already, you are talking about an electrical circuit which must not be an electrical cell must not be electrolytic. So that one is not correct. Yeah. Electrolyte. It's a compound which conducts electricity and decompose during the process. Yes, it's correct. Because electrolytes decompose, a chemical change takes place. Is that okay? That's fine. So uh, exchange, give back your books and we should go directly. So, yeah. Oxidation, that what happens at oxidation? You did oxidation and reduction in form three. The addition of oxygen to substance. Yes, th those ones are ones that we, you added now. I did not give those ones. I gave you the oxidation and reduction. Yes. Okay, yeah. Oxidation is... Yeah, it was with respect to oxidation number. What's the question? Oxidation and reduction with respect to oxidation number state. Yeah, we'll do a number state because I will have to go back to, to revise your form three work that I don't want to. Okay. So today, basically, at the end of this lesson, we are going to be able you we are going to be able to relate the physical properties of sodium to their chemical properties. Then equally in the course of the lesson, there is something new that we expect to have, to develop in us as individuals, all of us, right? We expect all of you to see the importance of each other. When you are in class like that, or when you are in any group, or when you are in any society, uh, we expect you to see the importance of every, that everybody matters, right? And your opinions are all important, your contributions are all important. And equally, uh, we should learn, we, we expect to see, uh, to respect people's opinions. Is that okay? We should learn to respect people's opinions even if they are not correct. We respect their opinions. So that is what we'll be looking at today. And that takes us to the physical properties of sodium. Let us take this physical properties of sodium. Well, you should note that the physical properties of sodium are not going to be too different from the
Three paragraphs. Like other arm alignment errors. Like other arm alignment errors. Come on. Like other arm alignment errors. Come on. It was from you don't like it, you don't like it. 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 You don't like You don't like it. You don't like it. You don't like it. You don't So do why solid metal? It means that you know how silver looks like now. It's shiny. It's shiny. It's as if it's white metal. Next one. Next one. It has a low melting point. It has a low melting point. Of about 97 degrees Celsius. It has a low melting point of about 97 degrees Celsius. I just put a melting point. It has a low melting point of about 97 degrees Celsius. And it's a good collector of heat and electricity. And it's a good collector of heat and electricity. Next point. Eat, eat. Electricity. Next point. Sodium is quite malleable. Sodium is quite malleable and ductile. Sodium is quite malleable and long time. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, we saw that several points of data earlier in the two. When we say sodium is malleable, it means that. So you can be written into sheets. You can actually hammer it into sheets like we have this metallic sheet here yes, on the door. That's what we mean by manipulating. Manipulating is that you can make it into sheets. And when we say so you can do that, this can put it into wire, right? You have like this thing that you can make it into wire. That's why I don't know. It's because of the fact of manipulating. It means that you have a piece and you feel like that, you can actually be put into a wire. Is that okay? That's what we mean by doctor. Next point. Metallic sodium is soft and, and can easily be cut with a knife. Metallic sodium is soft and can easily be cut with a knife. It means that if we have a piece of sodium here with that, we just use a knife and we cut and we shave. But we don't need it, okay? It's soft and can easily be cut with a knife. Next one. A silvery white color, a silvery white color of sodium easily tarnishes in air. A silvery white color of sodium easily tarnishes in air. Tarnish. Easily tarnishes in air. And you have the heat absorbed. When we talk tarnish, it means that it changes the color, right? When you cut it fresh, the color is so nice that when you see you're happy about it, it shines simply. But as time goes on, the color is just dying down and go. Take a simple example when a house is beautiful with uh, aluminum sheets. 
When you see the sheep as new as they are, you would really like to see them, right? They are bright and shiny. As time goes on, what happens? They tarnish gradually. And what is the cause of that tarnish? It's because of their reactivity. And it's the same thing with sodium, okay? That's why I say that we are relating the physical properties to chemical properties. We, we see it physically tarnishing and why? Why does it tarnish? They tarnish because they are reacting with something. And what are they reacting with? What? Oxygen. Somebody is saying it here, but say it in the stomach. You feel free to talk. Is that right? The class, even if you say that it's not correct, you seem to be correct. It's because they react with oxygen. Is that okay? But now, you, there are still some funny things. When you control, you get air, right? How, how, how much percent is oxygen in air? That's 24, right? That's 24 percent, but it reacts with this oxygen, and it doesn't react with nitrogen, which is up to 73 percent. Is that right? And then we talk about that's when we need to control to separate oxygen from from nitrogen, saying that this is the inactive part of air and this is the active part of air. It is because of this kind of things because when oxygen has the least opportunity, it's going to react with substances. So when substances are reacting, they will really react with oxygen. So that takes us directly to the chemical properties of sodium. The man does not do himself. Then the man just adjusts now. They don't do that. They leave their shoes at home, okay? No, I want you to come. I'm not coming. Okay. Paragraph. Metallic sodium is usually stored under a layer of kerosene. Metallic sodium is usually stored under a layer of kerosene. As it has high chemical reactivity, as it has high chemical reactivity, it is very reactivity. Metallic sodium is usually stored under a layer of kerosene. As it has high chemical reactivity. In bracket, sodium can react violently with oxygen and air moisture. Sodium can add problems with oxygen and the air moisture. And that they apply. Sodium can react violently as a spare violence in the Violence with oxygen and air moisture. And water. Water vapor, right? To steam. At room temperature. At room temperature. The reason I say here that air moisture is because uh, in the composition of air, there's a small amount of room for the which is made up of water vapor now. Is that right? That's what I mean by air moisture. That's to say that if we take a piece of sodium here and we keep it here, 
They will be reacting with oxygen and they will be reacting with the moisture which is in the air at the same time. Is that okay? So we're looking at those two main reactions of sodium and air. Reaction of sodium with oxygen. Reaction of sodium with oxygen. In the lower classes, particularly in the form two, where you give the reactions of oxygen in air, the reactions of oxygen of air, as oxygen in the air, looking at those common reactions around them, you saw that to, that metals will react with oxygen to form metal oxide, right? Mm -hmm. It is the same thing. So we are repeating it here, but it, there's a small difference. Because when metals react with pure oxygen is different from when they react with oxygen in the air. Is that right? What might be the difference? If you say that metals react with pure oxygen, they are reacting with oxygen in the air. What might be the difference between those two? Mass. Mass. Yes. Yes, it's a good aspect of you. What do you mean? In air, there may be impurities. That's good. Why in two of things? Just like that. Just come to think of you having to move if you are alone in this class, right? And you have to move to go and do something like that kind of the, of the class. How much time will you take? And how effective will you be? And now I ask you like move through this distance to go and do it. It's different now. So you notice that when it is in pure oxygen, you say that there is excess oxygen. And if there is excess oxygen, that's where you can see the full potential of sodium, right? Unlike it is diluted by the unactive part of air that I told you nitrogen. So sodium oxygen will be trying to react in the presence of nitrogen, but it will not react as if we were just oxygen alone. Is that okay? So just, that's the main difference that when we leave or come through, we can get we have to bring it out for you to see. So you're right. When sodium burns in excess oxygen, when sodium burns in excess oxygen, the main product of reaction is sodium peroxide. The main product of reaction is sodium peroxide. The main product of reaction is sodium peroxide. And not sodium oxide. And not sodium oxide. It's going to help me to take a look at the The equation is bad. So for us to balance, if you put through here, the equation is going to be balanced. Okay? Yes. So for those innocent people who did not know you have done. Next one. You have done the equation. So write the equation first. Mm -hmm. Next point. In there. In there. Sodium will swiftly oxidize to sodium oxide. Sodium will swiftly or 
of the nice soul. So you will sit in you. Or think you. Of the nice soul outside. Yeah, 
us what are to give us smoking by the inside because I believe that when you actually see the flame and it's burning, it's because they need to this is too hard that it's burning for this item. Alright. So but that's why you say that if you take sodium and you put in water, at the end, what you are going to have, the liquid that you have will be sodium hydroxide solution because the hydrogen has been burned. You take the injection. Now, uh, this takes us to another step in the class that we will have an activity to do. And, uh, this activity will permit us to. It's a simple activity, but it's going to allow us to see what we can find at the start of our class. That of how much we can appropriate, how much we can respect each other, and how much we can listen to you. some simple instructions, okay? So we we'll divide the class on the floor. We we'll divide the class on the floor. We will not just use these rules like that. Such that you are now in class 36, right? Which means that we should divide this class into 8 weeks because we have to use 8 to 9. And it's not a good thing that I should divide the class. And since there are fewer boys, you have to add this to this class to this class. I'm not going to do like that. So we should take the boys in the year. We need 6. This 6. This 6 ladies now. There are those two boys who come, come this way. We are just moving here. Eh? Yeah, come this way. And the girls are already moving that way to move their guy there. Does that make you? No, they have to be lying now. Yeah, three boys there should come to this road. Yeah, you move that way. Do it fast so that we should not waste time, okay? Then uh, this one here, we have up to the six girls here and just one boy. Two girls should move again this way. Then this boy should come this way. These girls too should move. Not no, no. The other one in this person behind here is moving this way. We arrange it. As, as you get to the other side, we will arrange your we'll task. Because if you have to rearrange your desk in such a way that you should go down, okay? So that you communicate amongst yourself. One group will be there, another group will be One group here, one group will be there. You make six steps. It's okay. One, two, three, four. Two steps to move from here now. Then this one has a lot of boys already. One, two, three, and a few others. Two girls should come here. Two girls should move from there to this road. You two now, both of you just come here. <laughs> Get up now and take, take care of your books because that will shift the legs, close your books. But I think you have to do now. You open the books later on. Yeah, one, two, three. Get up now, I don't want to so that you can be around. Someone should go this book one and then the head. Go behind. Go behind. Get up to the arrangements. Do the arrangements first, please. We have a very good time. Do it I'm <laughs> 
No, you can never be this. Even this one, if I'm and you are saying that it's
And when somebody is pulling, you follow too. Because there, there is something in, in class that we may find those very intelligent ones who will not want to teach. And those ones whom they have to teach and they become very insolent, they are not ready to learn. That's also in another big challenge. But we all need each other. Is that all right? Now, apart from what we have done on the instructions I gave you for this exercise, what else do you think could be done if we did the navigator? Or what can you say about the exercise generally if uh, it's a good way of studying and getting to the natural? What can you tell about the natural? Yes. It helps you to be united, which is a good thing. Yes. The good way of learning because it involves mental training. Yes. Some people are just in fight. Just follow up. You see an appearance of friends, right? It means that you want to see if uh, friends can participate normally or things like that. Yeah, freely. Yeah. To build relationships around you. Then what again? What do you know to get? That's to support this one. I will start on the one we want. Okay. Uh, I want you to do now to take the books and teach us in your mind how you felt when I gave the instruction, how you felt by the time you were writing, and the way you are feeling now with this book. In your book, first thing, how did you feel when I asked you to, when I started disputing you into books? Giving you instructions that you should walk quietly and giving you the packages. You are feeling it. Write them. They should be a true feelings, eh? don't you? Don't look on so another person's own book in order to know the feelings. Then the last thing we want to write is to tell us if you, are, if you think your contribution was important and the contribution of others because you don't have to come on that. Oh, no.